to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Elimination Chamber 2021 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire Elimination Chamber card, breaking down exactly what took place at the show last night, or last night or just moments ago, or whenever the hell the, the video's uploaded. Nonetheless, Elimination Chamber is one of my favorite shows. I love the Elimination Chamber gimmick match. You know, it's fantastic. Even though it's been watered down over the years, I still enjoy it. We still get some, and you know, some usually great spots. We get some intense moments on the road to Wrestlemania. This is one of my favorite parts here. It could be better, but Brad, at least we have us an Elimination Chamber matchup. I am looking forward to this show. I'm looking forward to some of these things that take place. You know, our Wrestlemania card is going to start to take shape right now, and it's going to be interesting, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into the Elimination Chamber 2021 card, breaking down what happened, giving you my own thoughts and opinions on what happened, and proceed through the whole card. See if this show was good, horrific, or somewhere in between. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, guys, so unless I missed something, I thought the pre-show started at 6, but the actual show started at 6 Central Time. So we're starting things off with the Universal Championship Elimination Chamber. The winning, the winner of this Elimination Chamber matchup will go on to fight Roman Reigns. At the time, I, I didn't know if it was immediately after or if it was later in the night, and it turned out to be immediately after the Chamber. But starting things off, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan started off this matchup. Really great technician from both of these guys. Really good flow to the matchup. You could tell that they were kind of directing the way things would go. They look fantastic in this thing. Great spots, great reversals. I definitely recommend going back and watching this, especially in the beginning of this matchup, man. Just some great flow and stuff like that. Entering third would be Trash Corbin. They brought the trash in, and they got rid of the trash, man. He actually didn't do very much, man. It kind of looked like I was booking this match, because this man was in the damn thing for like five, ten minutes, and he was, he, he tapped out, actually, to the sharpshooter, to Cesaro. Cesaro eliminates Trash Corbin in this thing after giving him the sharpshooter, and it looked like it came out of nowhere, honestly. Like, everybody was just kind of doing their thing. He locked in the sharpshooter and he tapped. I was completely dumbfounded by that. I was like, oh, oh, snap. Okay, I'm fine with it. I, I was smiling from ear to ear because I didn't give a damn. I was just shocked by it. Didn't see that coming. So, Trash Corman gets eliminated. Kevin Owens enters the matchup. Sami Zayn enters the matchup. Jey Uso gets in the matchup. So, all the guys are battling back and forth. We get some crazy stuff. Sami Zayn climbs up to the wall of the chamber. Cesaro holds on to the top of the chamber and, like, kind of double kicks him or, like, shotgun drop kicks him, like, Coup de Gras style off the side of the cage. Thought that was interesting. Before long, Sami Zayn would get stunned and he would be eliminated. So we progressed throughout the matchup. We progressed throughout the matchup. Jey Uso and Kevin Owens are beating the hell out of each other. Jey Uso locks my man Kevin Owens in the door. Like slams his shoulder slash arm in the door. Super kicks him five times. Kicks him again in the face. Frog splash. One, two, three. My boy KO gets eliminated. You know what? They made him look really strong. It did upset me. I would have liked to seen him go a little bit longer. However, he was eliminated, and that was shocking. I did not see that coming, but they, you know, they, they didn't let him go on to fight Roman and then lose, so I don't really know what to expect. After that, Jey Uso would eliminate Cesaro after a super kick and a frog splash. We're down to our final two, Jey Uso and Daniel Bryan, and Jey Uso super kicks Daniel Bryan. He's got him flat. He goes for a splash off the top of a chamber pod. He comes up empty, flying, running knee, whatever you want to say. One, two, three, Jey Uso loses, and the winner is Daniel Bryan. Now, I predicted this, but we didn't really like, I don't know, it was a good match. It was just so straightforward, if you get what I'm saying. There was no wrench in the plans. There weren't very many near falls. There wasn't a lot of reverse. It was literally just clear cut and dry Daniel Bryan winning the chamber. It kind of reminded me like a, like a video game simulation. You know what I mean? Where like it's not booked to be dramatic. It's literally just straight ahead A to B. Like I'm running story mode with Daniel Bryan and I'm trying to get to Wrestlemania and I just play through and you know, I kick everybody's ass. I win the matchup. I struggle maybe a tad, not much. I almost get submitted here and there. My knee hurts, whatever. But I still just power straight through and win the match. That's kind of what this reminded me of. And it was just like, it was a good match. Again, like I said, it just seemed so like cut and dry. There was no drama. There was no like creativity with it at all, really. And Daniel Bryan wins. And after that, Roman Reigns comes out. He challenges Daniel Bryan. It was like, I know it was like two or three minutes long. But Roman Reigns comes out and he goes for the spear. Daniel Bryan locks in the yes lock. They battle a little bit. Daniel Bryan ends up getting locked in that chokehold of Roman Reigns and he fades away and he loses and Roman Reigns retains his Universal Championship. And I don't know, there was just, there was no Seth Rollins, there was no Cesaro, very cut and dry to the point. And I don't know, I just expected something creative on the road to WrestleMania, man. Give me something, give me something creative. There was no creative here except for after the matchup, we get an answer to a call. Brad Edge shows up and spears Roman Reigns setting up Edge versus Reigns at WrestleMania. Now, I kind of do want to see this matchup. The only thing is, 
is, is I don't think Roman Reigns should lose right now. The way he's moving and stuff, you do have the ultimate baby face versus the ultimate heel, which is a great dynamic to the storyline and everything, but I just, I did not, ex I, I don't know why I, like, I knew that Edge would face Roman. I wanted to see that matchup. Like, I think the story's great and everything. I didn't want to see Edge versus Drew, so I guess this is probably our best matchup. I just wanted something creative, I guess. Having Edge show up is fine. He pointed to the WrestleMania sign, and the matchup seems to be set from what we're seeing, but I don't know. As far as the result of the match, I think it would have been better to see something more creative than that. I don't I don't really know. I don't know what I was expecting. I just, I guess I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I enjoyed the matchup, except it was cut and dry, like I said. Roman Reigns versus Edge, there you go. I am hyped for that matchup, I will say. I just want a good football game. I think it will be damn good. Spear versus Spear, Ultimate Heel versus Ultimate Face. We got some good stuff brewing, but I just thought the match needed more drama, maybe. Maybe that's what disappointed me. I don't know. Anyways, Roman's still your champ, and he's fighting Edge at WrestleMania. Next up, guys, was our United States Championship Triple Threat Match, and on this night, I did not know that Keith Lee was not going to be here until later on. Like, I think it was, like, early today on Sunday. But on the kickoff show, what I did not know is that John Morrison apparently won a matchup. I don't know who he faced. I don't know what the deal was. But he won a matchup in order to be in this matchup, which is pretty cool. I don't really have a problem with that. I didn't think he would win, obviously, because he did just get put in the matchup. That would have been crazy. However, Matt Riddle, Bobby Lashley, John Morrison, triple threat match. This matchup actually kind of slapped, man. I'm not even going to lie to you. I thought it was damn good. Like, a lot of great back and forth, great athleticism, great sequences. Just really fun, you know, stuff right here. Nothing, like, ridiculous, but it was a very fun matchup. I think it's actually worth the rewatch. I think you should go back and watch this matchup if you missed it, mainly because Brosif got us a win here, man. The U.S. champion is now Matt Riddle after pinning John Morrison, winning the championship. I'm guessing where we go from here is Lashley's gonna say, I didn't lose my championship. You didn't pin me, asshole. And then it's gonna be Riddle versus Lashley, probably at fast lane, possibly going into Mania. Maybe Keith Lee gets involved there. Maybe he's like, oh, what? I was removed from the show. I don't know why he was removed from the show. I, I, I don't think I've seen anything just yet, but Matt Riddle is your new U.S. champion, and that's all you really need to know about this thing, but it was a really fun matchup. I think all three men did really, really good job. MVP on the outside. It was, it was a good one, man. I enjoyed it. Very happy for Matt Riddle. Can't wait to see what he does in this capacity. I predicted this to happen, so I'm excited to, to see what I was wanting. I was wanting to see Riddle with the championship. Here we are, two for two on the night. Let's see where we go from here, but Matt Riddle is your new U.S. champion, and we'll see where we go from here. Next up, guys, was our women's tag team championship match. Shayna and Nia, my least favorite women's talents, probably on God's green earth. Not that Shayna is, like, near as bad as Nia, just both of them as talents, like, I just, woo! Anyways, Shasha Banks and Bianca Belair taking them on. Bianca Belair did win the Royal Rumble, teaming up with the SmackDown Women's Champion. It seems to me that we are building towards them colliding at WrestleMania, so I did not think that they would win here. Baszler and Jax do end up winning. This matchup was actually better than I thought it would be, probably because you have Sasha and Bianca on the same team here. I'm invested in that. I like them. I love Bianca. I think, you know, since Becky had to leave, I think she is probably my favorite women's talent on the main roster. But in this matchup, this matchup, again, like I said, was better than most women's tag team matches that you will see, especially in a WWE ring. But at the end of the day, is his name Reginald? Carmella's sidekick or Carmella's side man coming out at, with a champagne bottle and it like distracted Sasha Banks. I didn't really care for the ending of that matchup, but he distracts Sasha. Nia like does an ugly clothesline to the back of her head, hits her with a small and job and pins her. So I don't know. It kind of looked a little bit weak, but it doesn't really matter because they retain the women's tag titles. I don't know who's up next for these ladies, but it looks like we're going to get Carmella versus Sasha again at Fastlane until we get Bianca and Sasha at Mania. But this matchup was what it was. I wasn't very invested because I already kind of knew the end goal here. I wasn't waiting on something or anything like that. I thought Sasha may turn on Bianca or vice versa or something right there. But at the end of the day, Shayna and Nia retain their tag titles. And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, I know the show just flew by. We bet, like, I feel like the show started and ended. This show was over by 8.30 Central Time. That's absolutely insanity. However, WWE Championship Elimination Chamber. Drew McIntyre steps in there with five former WWE champions. Sheamus, Kofi, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton all doing battle here. And we had a good football game, man. Again, it was very similar to the first Elimination Chamber where not a lot of near falls, man. Pretty cut and dry, right to the point. A to B booking. Not a lot of crazy stuff going on here. Pretty good spots throughout the match. I'd say the last spot of the night was probably the best spot of the night. And honestly, I feel like this match kind of just convoluted together, like a bunch of stuff, like, just running through. And it wasn't a bad match, per se. I want to say the first chamber was better, but I could be wrong. Again, not a lot of drama 
or intensity throughout the matches. It was a lot of like maybe a cool spot here and there and some decent little wrestling here. However, it wasn't like dramatic, you know, not like near falls or, or stuff of that nature. Anyways, one thing that was really crazy about the matchup is that Kofi Kingston eliminated Randy Orton early. Now, I don't know if he's injured or something, but I was very shocked at this. No Fiend on the night, man. I thought for sure we'd see a Fiend. No Fiend in this thing. He gets eliminated. Later on in the matchup, Kofi Kingston sells a beautiful brogue kick and he is eliminated. Jeff Hardy hits a swanton bomb on AJ Styles. I thought Jeff Hardy, I was like, oh shit, Jeff Hardy about to go far in this thing. He takes a brogue kick and, or was it Claymore? I think it was a Claymore. He got eliminated. Regardless, Jeff didn't win, okay? He didn't win. We came down to the final three. Brogue kick to Drew McIntyre. Phenomenal forearm to Sheamus. Another beautiful sell. Beautiful stuff going on. Phenomenal forearm to Sheamus. Beautiful sell. Great rhythm. He gets eliminated. So we're down to Drew McIntyre and AJ Styles. Drew McIntyre is in the ring. AJ Styles rolls to the outside for a phenomenal forearm. He gets caught midair with a Claymore and he is eliminated. And Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure I predicted every match correctly. I could be wrong about that. I think I went a perfect 5 for 5 or 6 for 6, whatever the case was. However, that doesn't really matter because after the matchup, Drew McIntyre's chilling and once they had lifted up the chamber, once the chamber got lifted, guys, I knew for a fact. I said, okay, whoever he's fighting at Mania, it's going to be either a really big name or it's going to be something. I, I thought for sure we were about to get something big. Nonetheless, out comes Bobby Lashley. Bam! Takes out Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is now lifeless on the ground, right? Attacks him, puts him in the hurt lock. Master lock, Brad. That is the master lock as far as I'm fucking concerned. Anyways, Bobby Lashley beats the shit out of Drew McIntyre, and that's it. And you already know. Awesome. Here comes Mr. Money in the football bank, Brad. Here comes the Miz, and he cashes in his briefcase. He hits a, a little short drop kick, like basement drop kick to the knee of Drew. Hits him with a DDT. One, two, kick out. Drew McIntyre are still alive. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I thought he was going to fail in the cash-in, to be honest with you. Miz comes out there, hit, picks his ass up, skull-crushing finale. I was like, okay, he's going to kick out of this. He's going to kick out of this. One, two, three. That was it, Brad. No longer Mr. Money in the Bank, but uh, more like WWE Champion, Brad. The Miz is your new WWE Champion, and I honestly, honestly, I am deathly afraid now, because I honestly feel like we're going to get, I'm not even bullshit shitting you, man. You know Bad Bunny and The Miz have something going on, dude. They already have their feud going on, and I don't know if they are going to literally make it Bad Bunny versus The Miz for the WWE title. Is Bad Bunny going to win the WWE Championship? Are we serious, bro? Like, I'm all for the, you know, the, the surprises and all this shit, but if they literally put the championship on a celebrity or an artist or whatever, I had never even heard of the dude until a couple weeks ago. Not that he's not known. Not that he's not famous. If it was LeBron James, I wouldn't care. I don't want a celebrity holding the WWE title. I don't care what background they have. Honestly, I want someone who's there day in and day out, who's grinded their entire life to hoist that championship over the top of their head. Ha! Nonetheless, hopefully, just God in heaven, hopefully, it will be Miz versus Lashley versus McIntyre at Fastlane, and McIntyre wins the title back because Bad Bunny calls the Miz the championship. Please Please, God in heaven, make that the thing, and then you get your Damian Priest Bad Bunny versus Miz and Morrison matchup. Hopefully, that's what ends up happening. Drew McIntyre gets the title back, and maybe somebody shows up, or maybe Sheamus comes out there and attacks Drew McIntyre, and we get Sheamus versus Drew. At least that has story. At least we get a WWE title. No money in the bank over and over the head. No Seth Rollins on this night. That kind of shocked me. AJ Styles doesn't have a mania opponent. Randy Orton right now, unless it's The Fiend, doesn't have a mania opponent. Rollins doesn't have a mania opponent. Tons and tons of talent on this show who doesn't have a mania opponent. You're going to put Rollins, Orton, and AJ Styles in the damn Battle Royal? I don't think so, Brad. You better get those asses in some seats and put these guys in football games that mean something. But that does it for your Elimination Chamber full show review, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of the show down in the comments section below. That was uh, pretty interesting to say the least. But that does it for Elimination Chamber 2021 overall. Show flew by. I feel like I watched one match and it was over. I don't know. Pretty cut and dry pay-per-view. Uh, 
um, I don't know. I really don't know what to think, man. You guys can let me know what you thought of it, but I thought it was a pretty cut and dry show. I mean, I say it's a pretty cut and dry show. We, we had a fucking cash in. Drew McIntyre's not the champion. Miz is WWE champion, bro. Riddle is your champion. Edge attacked Roman. It just feels like I all, I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't know what the hell's going on, Brad. I'm hallucinating over here. It was a solid show. I had fun with it. Everything's just got to run in together, I guess. I, 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 I'm getting the hell out of here for more lines get crossed. Don't cross the line. You cross the line. I've been